during um, the peak of the pandemic, I made a connection with one of the patients. He was not doing well. Um, so this one, one day, I walked into his room, you know, in my usual bubbly self, and hey, he put his head down. And he said, Paulina, I don't have good news for you. And he said, um, I thought I was doing better, but the doctors just told me this morning, I've been on OptiFlow for so long. Um, it's time. On January 15th, 2021, I was admitted to LVHN with COVID. On my second day in the hospital, Pauline was assigned to be my nurse. Our first meeting was during one of those moments when I was so overwhelmed with fear and my eyes were tearing. Pauline intuitively recognized my distress. I do believe God intervened and chose Pauline to be my nurse that day. You are blessed to have Pauline on your staff as she portrays the epitome of what an LVHN nurse should strive to emulate. I'm sorry. So every time I um, listen to that or every time I read that letter, it, it's very emotional. You know, I'm glad I, um, I met that patient. And I'm also glad that I was one of the reasons why he kept faith and he kept, you know, he um, stayed strong. And this afternoon, we're announcing new guidelines for every American to follow over the next 15 days. As we combat the virus, each and every one of us has a critical role to play. play, to play, to play. I'm Andrea Kushner. Um, I work for Lehigh Valley Health Network. Um, I am a registered nurse. Matt Feller, medevac, as a flight nurse. Um, my name is Nicole Persing, nursing director and patient care services for LVHN. Hello, guys. My name is Paulina Yompe. I've been with LVHN for four plus years, almost five. Um, being a nurse before the pandemic was was definitely, it's too beautiful now, don't get me wrong. It was way, way different. We found humor in things. We were able to um, live our day-to-day -day lives and not, you know, go home with so much of what we saw each day. We had our routines and we knew um, how to handle things as they happened. I could see my, my colleagues' faces. You know, we could see who, who, who is who, we could talk, we could sit in the break room and have lunch together. Before COVID, um, the atmosphere was very, um, I, I don't want to say laid back. The pressure, the tension was different. You leave work and don't remember, like don't think about it when you leave. Regardless of what the treatment was, you had a pretty good path of what was going to work and what didn't. And you could, you kind of knew this was going to go well. Or, or it was not. We now need to appeal to every single American so that they can have their role in stopping the spread of this virus. If you are sick, please stay home. Realistically, we are going to be exposed to this unknown new disease every time we go to work. Picking up my baby was hard. Breastfeeding my child was difficult because I was always thinking, what if? There's, there's a tiny virus somewhere, and I'm gonna get it to my son, who's only three months old. What if he gets sick? What if, what if? It was very, very difficult. I have twins with uh, type one diabetes, so I was extremely fearful of bringing that home to them because I had no idea if they would get sick and how sick they would really get. I think it's the first time I felt like I could be this person. Like, I'm not immune to getting this either. Every single patient from your work in chill, there's a chance you can contract the virus. I used to just be afraid to come to work, knowing that coming to work, I put myself at risk and put my family at risk. Am I going to bring this home? Have I been exposed? How long before I start to have symptoms? I was, I was scared myself. I remember like getting ready the night before and I like said a really big goodbye to like my husband and my kids because I, I didn't want to 
bring whatever was happening back to them. I actually stayed away from my kids for the whole time because it was still so unknown. I lived in fear for such a long time. Fear of bringing COVID home to my kids. What if I get sick and I don't make it? And after a period of time, I had to talk myself out of the fear and just pray to God and just leave it in his hands. And I said, it's what it is. We had a patient actively dying and their loved ones, their, his kids, his wife said goodbye with our phone via FaceTime. That was a very intimate moment that I, I don't even know, like I didn't even know how to process that because it's a very intimate moment and we're doing it virtually. Exercise is really important to me. I've been an endurance athlete since my early 30s. Exercise is a big component for me to remain emotionally and mentally stable through nursing in general. I have completed two Ironmans and I feel like COVID has been very comparable to training for an Ironman. When I trained for my first Ironman, a lot goes into that. It's like another having another full-time job. And it's not just the running or the swimming or the biking, you know, all that has to go into it, but it's also the, the mental strength and the mental endurance you have to have to really build. March of 2020, it was utter chaos. Check your temperature. Don't touch your face. Refrain from travel. Outdoors always better. Stay home. Don't forget about cleaning your food. Experts saying there's no need to wipe down your groceries. There were so many changes happening quickly, and we had to be adaptable to that. We just go, 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 go. Every day, it was changing. You'd be receiving emails and notices. This has changed, that has changed, this updated. Do this today. No, 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 <laughs> don't do that now. What's going to work for this person? Because we don't know, nobody knows. And it was so challenging to keep up with it. And people on the outside thought, well, everyone's at home. It seems so quiet and peaceful and no one's doing anything. When in the hospital, completely different story was happening. People were in denial. It's not real, like it'll be gone in few weeks and people weren't seeing what we were seeing and we couldn't even, we could shout it from the rooftops and no one would believe us. So it was frustrating. Actually, the circumstances have changed. My most challenging day was day one of my colleagues who we worked side by, who I worked side by side with, passed away from COVID fairly, fairly young, later thirties. Uh, prior to vaccinations becoming available. His brother had already passed and he was in the ICU and not able to have visitors, including his own colleagues who yeah. being told no, that you cannot see your, your colleague in the ICU, you know why, but you're not willing to accept why. And then several months later, we had another uh, colleague of ours who in his early 60s, also passed uh, from COVID in the ICU. I feel like we had, we just all kind of had a breaking point where we walk in, just looking exhausted every day, just we're tired. The masking, we have to wear an N95, a regular mask, a face shield. We had to gown up for every single patient's room. Some families, family members, took their anger out on us. We were beat, you know, emotionally beat up every day. They didn't want to act that way, but we were the person that they were taking their anger out on because they were upset about the situation. Honest truth, for a while, and I really didn't really share this with, you know, with anyone, but for a while it really bothered me because all that would play in my head is my day at work. And some days were really bad where, like I said, you just go room to room, call bell to call bell, I can't breathe, sure. Get them all ready, get them settled, get them to breathe right. But I'm walking out, I'm going to the next room, the same thing. I think I'm, I'm trying to move on from it. It's, it's, not, it's not playing as much, but I still have memories of some of those scenarios and I'm like, my God. 
On 4C, we had a patient who was with us for a while and it was at, at a time where she couldn't have any visitors. It was her birthday. She was so sad to be in the hospital on her birthday. And she said that her husband would always sing to her, happy birthday, the Beatles version. <laughs> if anybody knows me, I kind of have a trunk full of dress up things yes. for these types of occasions. And I gathered all the staff together and we're like, I was like, we have to learn this. We have to do it for her. We um, all dressed up, came in, got her balloons and everything and sang her happy birthday. And it was the first time that I saw a patient in a long time smile and laugh because we danced too and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, um, that was one of my best days, I think, because we all came together for, you know, a great cause. And we videoed it and sent it to her daughter and just made their, made their day. I feel like every day was about COVID. It's put nursing into the limelight. I had people that I haven't talked to in years even reaching out to me, telling me that I was a hero and they were so thankful for what I was doing. Um, I, I don't feel like a hero. I mean, I just feel like this is my job and this is what we're meant to do. And why not do it, you know, in the middle of a pandemic? I mean, this is kind of, in one sense, what we signed up for. We didn't know, We none of us knew that this was gonna happen. None of us expected it to happen, but we care for sick patients. We care for sick people. We care for our community. As much as we're perceived as heroes, there's a whole lot of weight that goes with that perception. It's really a moment that we want to call on every American to increase their vigilance. Wanted to show you the difference in slopes between the spring surge, the summer surge, and the fall surge. So the American people know that this is more cases more rapidly than what we had seen before. The second wave was November of 2020 going into the winter of 2021. So patients doing well during the pandemic, as we all know, was a, a rare case. By the time I was transporting them, they were on the cusp of death. As each wave came through, the anxiety and the anticipation got harder and harder to deal with for all of us. The hardest day for me and patient that I had. Um, I actually was coming in to help um, one of my coworkers. I took over her shift. This patient was, she came from another hospital. Um, she was pregnant and she got COVID um, and she had um, deteriorated quickly um, to where she had to get intubated and they had to do a C-section. This was at the outside hospital um, and baby was sent to the NICU there. But mom continued to get worse. Um, and they sent her to Lehigh Valley um, for more acute care. And she ended up having to go on ECMO, um, which is pretty much like a heart-lung machine at the bedside. Um, it's like your full life support. And unfortunately, while she was on ECMO, um, she suffered a massive brain bleed. And then the rest of my shift was bringing her family back, including her 15-year-old son, um, her sister, her mom, her husband, um, and taking her off all of life support. That was the first time that I actually came home and cried. Um, I usually don't bring home any stories to my husband and cry about it, but that one, and it still sticks with me. So baby made it though? Baby was fine, the baby was okay. We are humans and that we do have emotion as much as we try to tuck them away and pretend that they don't exist, they're there. Getting into flying became something I always had an interest in. It wasn't something that I necessarily thought I would be doing as a nurse. I started flying when I was 15 uh, as, a, as a birthday gift, was a first flying lesson, and eventually got my pilot's license 
as a recre as a private pilot just to fly when I wanted to. When I fly, I either fly with friends of mine or generally I do fly just by myself. And when I do fly by myself, it is very much mind clearing. I am concentrating on something completely different than what I do every day. You're not worried, really worried about anything. You're concentrating on flying. There's never a time that I ever land where I'm angry or upset or or frustrated or emotionally drained. Euphoric might be a little too excessive, but it's just a, a state of, of calming enjoyment. We had um, an elderly couple that had been married for I cannot remember now how long, how many years, but it was a very long time. They had been hanging on with, with mm -hmm. COVID for a while. I was caring for the wife and my colleague was caring for the husband. They were not doing well. They both decided to um, remove everything and go comfort measures together. So we actually um, put these patients, these, this couple together in a room and allowed them to pass comfortably with holding each other's hands. I did um, bring some of their fam their children in because it's they were losing both their parents and it just didn't feel right for me to not allow them to see both their parents before they pass. Right after they left, the, 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 the patient, the female patient said, um, I'll take some morphine right now, Pauline. Um, give her morphine around 3.30, right at the, ch at, at the end of my shift. And sure enough, um, she died shortly after that. But they got to hold hands. They got yeah, to be they together. Held hands. Yeah, that was a tough day. Yeah. I think the husband hung off a little bit. I heard till like later at night time. He did because I came back that night. And yeah, but that him. was oof, that was tough. We gather here today at the end of a historic week to affirm to the American people that hope is on the way. Karen and I. We're more than happy to step forward to take the safe and effective coronavirus vaccine that we have secured and produced for the American people. It's a truly inspiring day. That was one of the best times, I think, was when we had that hope. The vaccines were coming out. Like, we saw some kind of light. Right, right. I, I cried. I, my, I think that was my that was my best my best day. Yes. Was, was the day I got that email saying, you could schedule for a vaccine. Now I was one of the first people mm -hmm. who took I that know, vaccine. I remember you and I was I first in line. <laughs> I was first in line, and they said, "I said I'm ready." And that moment, I rolled my sleeves down and took that shot. That was one of the best day. We gave our first vaccine at LVHN, I believe, the end of de or middle of December of 2020, and I think that was the biggest glimmer of hope. Even when there was just talk of a vaccine, I think it was keeping nursing going. I felt like the vaccine to me was that finish line of an Ironman. I felt like I've made it. We were really happy. We, we, we felt like there's, there was some kind of hope for us. We were tired of seeing people die. I was tired of hearing people saying I cannot breathe. That's traumatic. Sometimes even in my sleep. I can hear people say, I cannot breathe. I haven't gotten COVID yet. I've made it through and there's light. I feel like oh, maybe we can breathe. We are ready to put shots in people's arms and help fight this virus. It was extremely frustrating then when you had an entirely large group of people saying that they weren't, they weren't gonna get it. Once a good amount of vaccination became available by our third wave, our third wave very much, and, and the data supports it, is very much the wave of unvaccinated people. Virtually all COVID-19 hospitalizations and deaths in the United States are now occurring among unvaccinated individuals. 14 times greater to chance of dying if you get if you're unvaccinated. Please get vaccinated. It will protect you. It hit our younger population, so like 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Dealing with COVID patients, we came across a whole lot of different personalities who had different perspectives. We had patients who did not believe COVID exists. The same patients did not believe in the vaccine. So when they come into the hospital and we tell them you have COVID, it's like, okay, 
We don't believe in it. Gentleman is 60s. Vaccination was not something he chose to do. He developed COVID, developed respiratory failure. I can remember both myself and my uh, flight paramedic partner asking the family to come to the bedside so we could have a conversation with them. He very well may not survive transport. You're not going to be able to see him anymore because he is going to be in the ICU where visitors were restricted. And he is very, very sick, and he may not pull through this at all. Do you know if he made it? Uh, so he did not. We had some patients who uh, were not vaccinated and really expressed a lot of regrets not doing that. This particular patient, she was in ICU intubated. She was very fortunate that she made it out because most patients that are intubated end up not making it. So when I cared for her, she was actually closer to going home and she told me the whole story and she said, I wasn't vaccinated, Pauline. I didn't even believe in the vaccine. I didn't even believe COVID existed. She said, I regret all that. She said, I wish I could be on a news platform right now, telling people my experience and telling them not to do what I did. Over a year ago, no one could have imagined what we were about to go through. But now, we're coming through it. There is hope and light of better days ahead. We, we had deaths, but we had a lot of patients who walked out of here, um, not COVID-free, but survived COVID. There are times where there are indeed good things that happen. And the fact that they are few and far in between, I think makes them that much, that much better. We had a music that we will play for each time a COVID patient has been discharged. I did it a couple of times for different patients, but it was always, it was always a very joyful moment. And, and I'll call and they'll play the music. And it was just really, it was very satisfying. Thanksgiving of 2021, um, we were full of COVID and we had a married couple who are both patients on our unit. I had volunteered to actually work Thanksgiving night because um, we were short staffed and I came in and my heart was just like so warm because one of my lovely nurses um, decided that she was going to put the husband and wife together in one of their rooms and she put their tray stands together so they could have their Thanksgiving meal, hospital meal together. And that was just so heartwarming for um, to see someone just voluntarily do that. And I think that really demonstrates how we've come a long way and we've kept it um, light and human on our unit um, throughout the entire thing. We, we never lost sight of what's really important. A nurse is someone who um, takes care of someone who can't take care of themselves. The, the type of person who does make a good nurse is somebody who can be trusted, who is willing to continuously learn and and grow their grow their career, grow their knowledge. We we do everything from bathing our patients, being an advocate for our patients, being a listener to our patients, support system to our patients. We do it all. A nurse is someone who cares for someone else while putting their own health, their own feelings aside. There's an interest in being not only a strong person, because it does take that strong person who can adapt and overcome to the environment, but also the person who can be can be healing in not only their treatment, but in their words. My very first postpartum experience with my first, he had low blood sugar. Um, he was in the NICU for a week. During that time, I was also readmitted. I had postpartum preeclampsia and spent a day in the hospital for that. Then at three weeks um, postpartum, I was having a lot of abdominal pain. I was having 10 out of 10, um, like worse pain than labor, pretty much. They found that my entire pelvis was filled with abscesses and the infection was attached to everything. It was attached to all my organs. Um, it was horrible. It turned into a six hour surgery. And then they did not think that I could get pregnant again. Um, 
And when my son was nine months old, I got pregnant. It was a miracle, actually. Never really wanted kids. And then, you know, marriage happened and really figured out that I did want, I, I did want children with my husband and he really wanted children and I'm very happy. <laughs> so prior to having kids, you were just, and now you're like, now I am a kid person. Now you're a kid person. Right? Yes. <laughs> All right. On January 15th, 2021, I was admitted to LVHN with COVID. Pauline was assigned to be my nurse. She portrays the epitome of what an LVHN nurse should strive to emulate. I'm sorry. I'm glad I, um, I met that patient. He stayed strong. I kept telling him, I have faith, I, I have hopes that he's going to be alive, he's not going to die. And I think that kept him going. Um, I'm glad that... Um, I'm glad that I could impact someone's life like that. And how are you feeling later? Emotional. To have this opportunity is uh, pretty profound. says, I don't think I can do this again. We will. Like, that's, that's what we do. 